Good morning, everybody. My name is Meredith Harris with the Marlboro Economic Development Corporation, and welcome to Episode 9 of Exploring Economic Development with MEDC. Jill? Hello. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. How are we doing today? Oh, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited. It feels like we haven't been here in a while, but it's only been it's two only weeks. It's only been a couple weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And we're sure that it's number episode number nine. Yeah. Don't get me all tripped up. You know? I know. I know. <laughs> but so in a few weeks, we'll be at episode 10. 10. We should do something to celebrate. I agree. You know, we got milkshakes that one time. We can do that again. Can we do milkshakes? We can definitely do that again. <laughs> Just for no make reason happen. other than mm -hmm. our 10 episode anniversary. That's right. But um, hey, welcome everyone. If you're watching us live on YouTube or Facebook, please let us know by commenting. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is just say hi. Let us know where you're watching from. Any questions you have, just join the conversation. That's the easiest way to do that. And if you're watching this on the replay, either on social media or at our local cable access channel, WMCT TV, hi, how are you? There's our email and our phone number on the bottom of here. So you can give us a call. You can send us an email if you have any topics you Anything. want us to discuss. Yep. Yeah, we'd love some topic suggestions, honestly. Yeah. Because um, we're having fun and, and we think we know what you guys want to hear and what you guys want to talk about. But if there is anything, we might we, yeah, we might not. So please let us know. Chime in. <laughs> might at be any missing point. That's we don't right. Know. And I think you need to talk about a sharing contest. Are we doing? Oh yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're bringing it back. We're bringing it back. So if you share this, if you're watching us on Facebook, because we can track Facebook shares. Not YouTube's a little trickier. So if you're on Facebook. Share this post to your personal page, to one of your groups, maybe like the Marlboro Residence page. You know, just go ahead and share it over there. <laughs> but share this live stream, and then you'll be entered in. So, so do we want to do T-shirts or gift card? I think we decided on doing a gift card once a month. Yes. And then we'll do a T-shirt once a month. All right. So it's yeah. the, the first live stream of June. So we'll do a gift yeah. card? Yeah. All yes. right. We're going to be doing Perfect. a $25 gift card. To a Marlboro restaurant. Whatever Marlboro restaurant you like. You'd like yeah. to go. Agreed. Try out. And you don't have to bring us with you. No, you don't. I mean, <laughs> if you want to. We'll go. We're not going to be mad. No. We'll meet you there. All right. So last time we were here, we talked to President Mike Ossing. We had a great conversation yes. about the city council and MEDC. We kind of were able to jab at uh, President Ossing a little bit about well, how we changed his mind. And, and he believes in MEDC at this point and um, had a really great conversation about TIFFs and kind of how the council works and planning and all the things that we do together. So that was really a great conversation. Yeah. We appreciate uh, President Ossing making the time to be here with us yeah. last week. Such a treat. It was very much so, very yeah. much so. So today we're very excited. We're going to be introducing a guest. Her name is Kelly Arvidson with Mass Development. Good morning, Kelly. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> I am so excited to have you here today because normally this time frame we would be together doing, we're going to talk a lot about building relationships, but we would be normally doing our kind of trip to New York City where we go to one of the trade shows and we're not doing that this year. So I'm glad to have you here and be able to get my fix of, of chatting with Kelly and, and being together in person, which is really nice. I feel the same way. Thank yeah. you. It's good to see you. Good yes. to be here. And you have watched the podcast before, so we're really excited that you're, you know, now coming in front of the camera with us to to check it out. And we're just really excited to have you here today. I am honored. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So, Kelly, tell us about Mass Development. You've been there for a lot of years. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> Not too yes, many. I have. Not too many. Years. Started at twelve. Yeah. But um... <laughs> tell us about Mass Development. I don't know if a lot of people know about mass development i mean you guys are out there but you know they might not know exactly what you guys do and what types of programs you have sure so many wonderful things going i'll give on over the there. quick version please but so mass development is a quasi-state agency so what is that we are uh self-funded but we serve at the pleasure of the governor awesome. and our mission is really to improve communities that we serve and the people in them we we everything we do has a double bottom line we're public purpose driven so mm -hmm. we're about job creation creating uh housing rental housing of any kind affordable or market rate because we know there's a huge housing crisis in massachusetts so we are we're a couple of things we're real estate developers so we mm -hmm. take on big projects like devon's that's a well-known project 4400 acres um and we also are like the state's bank so we do loans and bonds and we have some grant programs and so we get involved we don't we're not a competitor to banks but we try to get we're a little more flexible a little more creative for projects that need us so what kind of projects do we look for mixed use is beautiful uh, especially in a downtown blighted area where we're going to be really focusing on making change that matters that sure. we don't get involved in strip malls and hotels and restaurants things that don't need us we really want to make sure there's a need um manufacturers 
we're a big friend to manufacturers because they qualify for special funding, which is uh, called bond financing. It just really looks like a, a loan, but it's a lower rate because you qualify. If you're a nonprofit, there's no better better place in town than Mass Development. Any college, hospital, nonprofit, uh, Mass Development's the best place to be because they also qualify for special funding. So, so you know, not a lot. With, you guys don't do a lot. We, huh? we, we don't do much, <laughs> but you know, in our spare time, and we do have a variety of rolling grant programs yep. and and different things that certain entities qualify for. Right now, we've just opened up our sixth round of collaborative workspace funding, and what that is, it's anywhere from fifteen thousand up to a hundred thousand. Um, that if you are, let's say, you're a food incubator, maybe you have a life science incubator or manufacturing it doesn't matter um it's competitive so we'll we'll take applications from all over the commonwealth and it's to put together something where people share space for a common goal so cool where where, yeah they can rent different equipment together they can share the cost of big pieces like restaurant hoods or big manufacturing lathes and cnc equipment and it's a really cool concept we've done it six times now and i think last year we awarded like 35 different awards in all different sizes well, they, all the different industries, too. That's I, All like, different industries. The restaurant piece is kind of new. I mean, you, you used to see the collaborative spaces just being life science where they couldn't afford some of the bigger equipment, so they were coming together. But the restaurant part is really kind of cool. The restaurant part is so cool mm-hmm. because there's so many people, even especially probably more so after COVID, making jelly at home or right. making, you know, all salsa. All the Etsy folks. And, and all of that equipment is expensive and mm-hmm. getting certified, USDA certified. Right. So it, we love those. That's and awesome. they're getting creative now there's cooking classes and they'll have nights where That's you can cool. go and shop from the different you know purveyors it's so wh- it's where fun. was the most recent one is it in near here or we have one that's opening soon in Fitchburg okay, okay. um and they're all over I mean we've got hundreds that's cool um and I think Marlboro may have one or two I should know off the top of my tongue well we will but I, I think should there's know a that manufacturing too, we'll incubator into... in Marlboro. That's awesome. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll have to research that. But, yeah, they're great. And if yeah. if anybody is interested that's listening, applications are open until July 2nd. You can go right to our website, that's awesome. massdevelopment.com. All the details are there. Like I said, it's competitive, but there's, you know, we try to make sure yeah. that we cover the whole state and nothing's, you know, concentrated in one industry or one location. So we'll we'll make sure to link below mm-hmm. uh, for anybody that's watching uh, a link to your website for that program. That that yeah, sounds awesome. It's really great. So you just made a great point that I think um, we need to make sure that people understand. Mass development is the entire state of Massachusetts. Entire state. We yeah. have five regional offices, and we have a team of folks on the ground in every region. So we have an office in Worcester, right? One in Boston, Fall River, uh, Lawrence, Springfield, and Devons, of course. And, you know, we've got lenders and investment bankers and real estate folks and community development uh, so that we're all working together when there's a project that needs our help. We kind of solve these problems as a team. That's so awesome. it's kind of one-stop shopping. So you get us get you us get all. get everybody. That's <laughs> awesome. I think we might have a comment. Yeah, we awesome. have a few comments. First of all, I kind of missed this before, but President Austin says, uh, hello, Meredith and Jill, best, best podcast ever. 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 <laughs> but he also said, Cher, I'm happy I can just watch. <laughs> yeah. He's not in the hot seat this week. So he, <laughs> share away, share away. Well, the technology might be tricky. Yeah. Right, maybe. Right. All right. right. Yeah, whatever. Um, Eric, <laughs> Eric's is saying, uh, hey, ladies, uh, great show. Tun- tuning in from the east side. That's great. Eric, great to have you. Thank you so much for being here. And then uh, we do have a few questions. First, Sammy says, Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. And also Spencer Geary from WMCT says he loves this podcast. So Spencer, Spencer we love you. So thank you for watching. We're excited <laughs> that you love it. such a great neighbor. Yeah, absolutely. Great member of the team. All right. So here's the question. Is MEDC a branch of mass development? It sounds like they do a lot of the same kind of things. That's a that's a great question, David. No, so um, mass development is no. I'm sorry, MEDC is not a branch of mass development. But you know that you kind of segue into our whole topic of the mm. podcast. We work really well together, right? So a mass development is a state organization that MEDC looks to for guidance on different you know projects, things like that. We tend to work with developers that are coming in if they need any kind of financing or any of the help that mass development offers. It's our our job at MEDC to connect them to the state resources, which you know Kelly is is one of them. And and Kelly, for a long time you've been in this region, you've been serving our region, and and so you're you're based out of Worcester, though, right? You have an office. So in Worcester? I have two offices. I have one in Worcester and one mm-hmm. in Devon. 
Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. But yeah, my team covers the whole, you know, of central Massachusetts. Central Mass. And, you know, if, if, if it's something out of central Mass, I always know who to connect it. You do with. always know who to connect <laughs> us with. That's what I feel like my greatest claim to fame is. If I, I know. don't know, I probably know someone who does. And you and, really do. And that's the thing. I've been here for so long that, yeah. you know, it, it's hard not to know all the players. And so I feel like my Rolodex is probably my greatest attribute. <laughs> Rolodex. <laughs> that's how old I am. <laughs> but you've, you've been involved in econ not just mass development, but economic development fr from a state perspective for a really long time. And, and for me, coming into the role, gosh, five years ago, you were such an asset to me to be able to get to know you. And I remember Tim saying, you need to know Kelly. You need to get to know Kelly because she knows everybody. And boy, was he right. Because uh. you, you really do. And in any time there's a question you're always willing to help and i think that that's just such a your great you know value to your team in that way so thank you <laughs> absolutely i mean it sincerely <laughs> so are I you know, guys about to hug yeah we <laughs> <laughs> air hug Aww. it's been a long time since we've gotten a hug until that's today right. but we're vaccinated so we can hug each other we're that's right we're good it. and so on that note i think with things opening up and we're starting to kind of get back to what we do i think the biggest thing that we partner together on and which has been a really great thing for medc and for marlboro is to kind of join on these i guess you can call them team massachusetts you know branding outreach trips mm. that have been going on for many many years and you know, Kelly, you kind of took me under your wing when we started doing some of these trips. But can we talk a little bit about the site selector things that we do with Mass De not Mass Development, Mass Econ? You know, our friend, our friend Doug over at Mass Econ, and we we typically go out and we'll we'll travel to places. You know, not only locally but regionally, statewide, and then nationally. You know, across mm. the country to try to build relationships with people outside of Massachusetts. Mm. And why do we want to do that? I'm kind of I know I'm talking a lot right now, but the the importance of doing that. It's not going to be, you know, it doesn't help anybody for us to be trying to steal companies from inside of Massachusetts, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. If we try to make relationships outside of Massachusetts, and don't get me wrong, if somebody from outside of Marlboro wants to come to Marlboro, <laughs> we're happy to have Doors you. Doors are so open. Come on over. <laughs> Um, but really, we really, really love when there's folks that are outside of Massachusetts that want to come in, you know, and so it's important for us to put ourselves out there in terms mm -hmm. of branding and marketing, get out there, and put your name out there. So mm -hmm. we've been doing that in Marlboro. I don't think a lot of other cities and towns across the Commonwealth have been kind of hooking their wagon to that, mm -hmm. you know, hitching their wagon to that train, or I don't know, what did I just say? But you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> hooking a wagon to a train. I don't know, we're getting on a train. But, uh, <laughs> but you know what I mean? So we're going out to these trade shows and the bio-international, the conventions. I mean, I, I'm going to toss it over to you because the importance of those things is huge. I, I could not agree more. And of all the things that I've done in my job at Mass Development over the last 25 years, I'd say that the partnerships and the relationships and the trade shows that we've worked together with so many different agencies between yeah. Mass Life Sciences Center and Mass Econ and Mass Bio and Mass Medic right. and Marlboro, you are clearly the rock star community that yeah. always joins in, mm -hmm. always want to partner. Yeah. And and I think you're seeing the, the benefits yeah. of those relationships because Again, you always know who to call. People always know to call you. Mm -hmm. We talk about Marlboro was always just the the example of a community that gets it right because people don't know about you if you're not out there. If you don't and, put yourself out there. And, and we put ourselves out there as a team. I think we all get to know each other really right. well. Mm -hmm. When I think over the years of, of the companies that wouldn't be in Massachusetts if we didn't meet them and do the recruiting that we do at these trade shows, and frankly... You know, this isn't a negative, but Massachusetts doesn't have a huge budget for statewide trade show participation mm -hmm. as some of the other states do. I mean, we compete with states that oh, have big time multi million dollar budgets and send just hundreds of people right. to cover these trade shows. And we usually go in a small group, you know, nickel and diming, you know five or six of us Me, from different and, organizations yeah. that Doug all split the cost of Tiffany. a booth right. at the bare minimum. Right. But we're out there and we're present and right. people know us and they see us and they see us year after year. And in your case, when we go to MD&M, the mayor comes. Right. There's no right. greater compliment to companies from Marlboro than when we walk the floor with the mayor and you get to see what 50 or 60 companies in right. New York City, right. when we go to MD&M, that's, it's huge. That's just huge. I mean, so you talk about him being able to, you know, we talk about BRNE and retention and attraction, but being able to hit, you know, five or six Marlboro companies in, in two hours mm -hmm. and to actually have a real life conversation with people from those companies and get feedback, it's huge value. It's huge. Yeah. I look mm -hmm. at that as probably the part of what I've done over the last 
25 years. That's I'm most proud of yeah. because those relationships never go away. Right. People remember you. And it may not be that we go to a trade show in New York and we come back. We just stole a company from Florida. <laughs> but two years later, the site selector that we met at an event right. or the, you know, the company that we, we talked to at one of our own hosted events calls and says, we're ready to talk about New England. Right. And we've already know them. Right. So it, the door has already been opened. The carpet has been laid. Right. And now it's a comfortable conversation and we stand out. Right. Mm. Well, and I think that's that's the important piece to remember, too, is that it might not be right away that you see kind of the fruits Absolutely. of the labor. But, you know, a couple of years goes by and you, you hope that these people that you've made these relationships with, site selectors across the country, that when they have a big company that's looking for their next corporate headquarters or, or whatever it is, oh, wait a minute, didn't we meet some folks from Massachusetts a couple of years ago and they go back and they look through their emails and they find our name and we're mm -hmm. right there and we're readily available. And we've had a couple of success stories from some of these trips. In, in Marlboro, one in particular, we were in New York a couple years ago. I think it was 2019. Uh, yeah, right before. Remember 2019 when we got to go places, which was uh, Gosh, it wow. seems like a long time, <laughs> a ago. Long time ago. But I remember walking the the show um, in, at md &M in New York City right before the pandemic. And, and somebody said to us, it was Pulse Systems, which is a company in Marlboro. And we had looked through the book to find out who's here from Marlboro because we want to make sure to go say hello. And hey, you guys are new to Marlboro. That's really mm. great. Well, lo and behold, did they say to us, well, that's because we met you and the mayor a couple of years ago while we were here. And, and when we were looking for our next place to open up, uh, we decided to go to Marlboro as a result of that. And so nothing Those better are the than stories that, that matter you know. so much. And you right. know, that was worth it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So any other ones, Kelly, I know, you know, maybe some ones statewide that were big grabs. I mean, this team, Massachusetts, that we're talking about, I mean, there's Mass Bio that's involved, Mass Life Science Center. I mean, there's a huge, and I don't think people even really realize that there's a team of people from an economic development perspective that are out marketing, you know, not just Marlboro, but Massachusetts as a whole at some of these big, huge conventions. I mean, life sciences and bio in Massachusetts is huge. It's huge. huge. And, you know, I, we've had a lot of different names over the years. And I definitely consider you part of this team because you've, you've been part of it. But, I mean, Team Massachusetts is a real thing. Right. And it's funny. The players change depending on the industry. Right. So Team Massachusetts may be all life science for one show, and maybe it's all manufacturing and, and other incentives for another. But the truth is you get one of us, you get all of us. Right. No matter what <laughs> industry it is, there's a team of us that are going to get together and you're going to know about every single incentive, mm -hmm. every finance program. You're going to get connections to anyone else in the industry that you want to know right. about, connections to our hospitals, our universities, the who's who in, in whatever you need to know. Right. So this team, Massachusetts, it's kind of small, but mighty. But Not mighty. a lot of money behind it, but it's real. Right. And when we get a request from site selectors from all over the country, all over the world, and you know, often we get seventy-two hours. We need sites you that will turn around like this. You know, five hundred thousand square feet. We need fifty acres. We need it to be thirty miles from right. Marlboro or thirty miles from Boston. This team gets together, and I don't think there's ever been a time that we haven't been able to produce what. You know what was for. asked of us because everybody right. knows each other we trust each other we don't mind calling each other at you know <laughs> seven o'clock at night this is due tomorrow we've got to get I together and do it and yeah. we all want to right and well, it gets I love, ex it's exciting it's exciting right. because we all care so much about bringing right. business to massachusetts and and you're you know yeah marlboro is a priority, but right. you're just excited if something's coming to Absolutely. Massachusetts as it is if it's coming to Marlboro, and I feel right. the same way. Right. If there's not a financing role for mass development, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter where they locate. It's a win for the state. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think we kind of do it a little bit under the radar. Yeah. None of us really cool. go out and get a lot of publicity for it. Right. But we're all right there and we're present. And um, I love that Mass Econ has kind of taken it and owned it. They yeah. owned it when it was more of a life sciences center. Mm -hmm. uh, mass bio type focus right but now it's for all industries and we have a meeting on monday and we'll go through every single lead that's from any organization in the state and make sure who's following up where do they stand is it a win is it a loss is it's it so in play hmm. and again it's it's 
it's kind of quiet and understated. And then when the win happens, you know, we celebrate it and we move on to the next one. But it's so, it's so important to have that follow up because there's there's nothing worse than, you know, you, you're looking for something or you reach out and then nobody gets back to you. You know, so it, being able to have that follow up and Pete and Doug and Annie and all those folks over there, they're, they're paying attention to it. They're making sure that they're using their relationships that they've built with people throughout the Commonwealth to, to make sure that we're bringing business in. Yeah. To, the, to our community And keeping businesses here. Right. I think that's the other really big thing that let, when we go to MD&M, I yep. think there's on average close to 200 Massachusetts companies, uh, manufacturers yeah. of you know automated equipment, medical device, and you and me and others in our group, yeah. including Doug and Tiffany. Tiffany, yeah. We meet every single one of them. Right. We go through that yeah. book like it's our job. And, and we we've, learn We so highlight much. every single one. Yeah. And we spend time with each of them. And they look for us. Right. If we're not there, we're it's obviously weird. missing. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think just, hey, thanks for being in Massachusetts. What can we do? Right. If it's financing, if it's a new building, if it's job training, if it's incentives, whatever it is, we we're going to hook you. you up after the show. And we get so many calls after these shows. Right. And we're super responsive. We've done lots of follow-up meetings. Absolutely. You and I together. Big time. With companies that yeah. we met at the show, that they want a little more information. Right. Those are, Huge. that shows us we're doing our job. I think you just reminded me of, I think it was the last, so the last time I was on a plane, I think was when we were going to San Francisco early 2020, but oh, yeah. was it the SPIE Photonics? Yes. And remember Doug set up the meeting with um, folks at, was it BU? And we got to go in and we were learning the about incubator. photonics. And, yeah. The photonics. And that was right. amazing. It was awesome. And we stayed in touch with a lot of those companies. Right. But we got to learn, like we learned their language. And, you know, so when they call, it makes all the difference in the world to be able to say like, okay, we need X, Y, Z for requirements. And we actually have heard those terms before, before we know what they're talking about and we can react and We've forgotten a few them. of them, That's but okay. we can remember <laughs> quick, more quickly now. <laughs> but that was amazing. I felt like that was such a gift was, of a day. It was Like awesome. learning the language of photonics or biotech right. or right. medical device that we can go into these companies with more confidence well, and, and think, like you said, speak their language. Well, and I think it's important too. You know, life sciences and biomanufacturing is really hot right now. That's the industry in Massachusetts. Hotter than booming. ever. Mm-hmm. But it, that wasn't always the case, right? And right. is it always going to be the case? I don't know. You know, we, if I had my, who, who says it, my, my, crystal my crystal ball, ball. <laughs> to see if I could predict the future. I think it's President Nossing that says that. So yeah. sorry for stealing the trademark. <laughs> Stole it. Stole it. Mine. <laughs> but I mean, we like to think that biomanufacturing life sciences is going to be hot for, you know, and I, I do yeah. think for the I foreseeable think, future, yeah. it's here to stay. Yeah. But if there is another industry, you don't ever want to put your eggs in one basket, right? So as we're growing the life science industry and the biomanufacturing, we want to make sure that there's some diversity of industry you know whether it's advanced manufacturing other things that if something does happen you know we're we're not relying on just one particular yeah. group of individuals i'm kind of curious what was what was the big industry i mean i have some ideas about it knowing friends that like grew up here and everything but like before biotech mm-hmm. here in marlboro what was kind of like the big industry maybe 15 years ago well, I mean, I know that RCA was here and um, Fidel- Fidelity was here. We've talked, how many times have we talked was about digital, Fidelity? Digital. Digital. Digital was down. So over that. chip digital manufacturing. Yeah. yeah. Marlboro's always been manufacturing. I mean, go back to yeah. the shoes, right? I mean, the shoe <laughs> manufacturing. But right. seriously, Marlboro's always been a big manufacturing uh, community. But the fact that we've been able to, you know, we talk about the pandemic a lot. Mm. I think the the reason that we've been able to kind of fare okay through the pandemic is is this life science cluster that was already in play, yeah. right? You know, so as things kind of blew up in the in the world and it was like, oh my gosh, and everybody was looking towards life sciences and manufacturing, we already kind of had the bones mm-hmm. there to kind of build on that, which was really great. Yeah. And I think Marlboro deserves a lot of credit for that because you took that industry and you made them feel welcome. I've always said there's such a difference between the communities that make an industry feel welcome mm-hmm. and those that, well, it's okay, but I'm not going to go out of my way. Right. And Marlboro has always rolled out the red carpet, no matter what the industry. Yeah. So when the life sciences community started to come to Marlboro, it's flourished because yeah. they realized this is a good place to do business. Right. Mm-hmm. The mayor is going to come and see me on a monthly basis. Yeah. MEDC is going to mm-hmm. roll out programs yeah. and, and make introductions so that we can take advantage of every single incentive that's out there. Right. That's the key. I mean, we use you guys as an example all the time. Thank you. Because it's about making companies want to be there. Hmm. They can go anywhere, right. not just Massachusetts. Right. They can go anywhere. Right. So I hope 
I hope other communities learn from you. And I know you're always welcome to share. I can put you on the phone with a million of other communities right. that are trying to learn how to do things better because right. you guys have figured it out. Thank you. Well, and that's one of the reasons I mean it. why Thank we you. started this podcast, right? Absolutely. To be a resource and to sh- share information and everything. And, well, and so I, I, I won't go to, I won't tell the, the kitschy story, but I'm, I'll never forget Tim Cummings like talking to me about economic development. And when I, when I came to MEDC, I didn't have a lot of economic development hmm. experience. And the reason for that is there's not a lot of economic development in Massachusetts the way that you see it in other parts of the country. Hmm. You know, southern so states, other pl- parts of the country, they economic development is a is just part of every community. Right. It's not really viewed that way in no. Massachusetts. There seems to be kind of a resistance. Sometimes. Yeah. And you know. so I hope we're breaking down some I of hope those so. barriers. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think there's a combination of lack of staff Mm -hmm. Mm. or too much business when you think Mm -hmm. of the communities maybe closer to boston that maybe haven't had to work as hard i think as a negative vacancy rate yeah right (laughs) when we further we have to get out towards 495 and we have the same thing at devon's right i mean we really had to work to put ourselves on the map right and Mm. i was at devon's sadly when it first started and i can remember us like really trying to figure out what is going to make people think of devon's right and and our first thing, we need a loss leader. Yeah. So mm. we, our first big client that we could get ourselves known for was Gillette. And oh, yeah. we gave him a Who? sweetheart deal just to get him <laughs> what, in the door. I'm sorry, I just want to chime in. Who's Gillette? Like the, <laughs> the razors? Yeah. That's how old I am. <laughs> but that one decision yeah. launched so much. our ability to do a whole industrial development park. And now we've got a life sciences park. And Bristol Myers Squibb came Huge. down the road. Also, another site selector connection. Yeah, right. um, so, it, you just never know when it's these the things are going to happen. The gift that keeps on giving, right? It really is yeah. the gift that keeps, keeps on, on giving. giving, and it, that's the best part. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Do we have questions? We have a question. All right. Spencer has a question for us. His question is: Let me move this over here. What is an industry you would like to see become big in the coming years? And then we've got a, a follow-up question to that. But what's an industry? So right now we've got a lot of life science. Mm-hmm. What what do you guys see that you'd like to see grow at least? Well, I, I think the the natural answer is the bio the manufacturing piece okay. of it. Because I think the life science is a lot of the R and D and all that stuff that's been taking place. I think now we're kind of we're pivoting into that, mm. you know, manufacturing piece of it. Yeah. And I think that's what you're going to see kind of explode. You know, we're talking a lot right now at the council level about the campus and kind of this bio ring and they're they're just one of probably five proposals off the top of my head of folks mm-hmm. that are trying to come in. There's another biomanufacturing building that's being built on spec down on Nickerson oh Road. Oh my gosh. I that's mean people great. Yeah, but people are building buildings with no tenants because they they know that the tenants are out there, yeah. you know, and if they build the building and I, I, you know, sometimes it's a little backwards. They build the building because a lot of these tenants come in and they say, I need the space and I need it yesterday. Absolutely. And so they don't have time to wait for the building to be built. So they're just building them. And you know, if you build it, they will come. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I know that we've Spencer, I, I don't know if that answers your question, but you know, I, I do think that that is going to be the, the natural segue over mm. the next and couple of years. I couldn't agree more statewide because I think, we have a reputation as being really great at R&D and all the colleges right. and universities. We've got a great, talented, skilled workforce. Right. Um, but then the perception is, well, then we'll move down south where we can manufacture a little less For expensively. Cheaper. Yeah. But now I think we've figured out how to be competitive right. and, and create the same scenario that they have down south, and they don't have to move that far. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're seeing the same thing all over Central Mass, and I'm thrilled to know that you've got five. You so know, many. Yeah, we're doing the same thing at Devon's. We've never done spec. Right. We've mm-hmm. finally allowed that to happen for the first time since I've been there because there's such a demand. And how, how amazing, too, you come to Massachusetts, this education hub, you come here, you go to college, you get your degree, and then you can stay here. You yeah. can stay you here. You can stay here, and you can work here. And, and yeah. that's why the housing crisis is so important. Mm-hmm. We need to figure out mm-hmm. how to get a whole lot of housing built so that yeah. we can keep the young talent, mm-hmm. the young kids, like right. my daughters who've just graduated from college. They need places to live that are affordable yeah. and nice, right. close to where they want to work. Where they want to work. And, and Marlboro's done a good job of having mm-hmm. the buzz that they need. Yeah. Um, I think that's the key. I mm-hmm. think young people need to be in a place where they feel like there's a great sense of community. Yeah. Right. They're very green. They're yeah. very eco-friendly. Right. Uh, they want to live and work and and live, play. Work, play together. Yes, I hate yes. to say that, but that's what they want. That's what yeah. they're looking and, for. And if they can walk, even better. Right. Um, you know, yeah, I think we, the pandemic's changed a little where people don't have to be on top of each other <laughs> or they in, in a downtown. Be, right. But 
yeah. in a close proximity to each right. other. Yeah. So. But, and I think um, you know, we have no lack of housing proposals either. I mean, that's something that everybody's looking to do that. But we have a couple of really exciting projects that we're talking about at the council right now, some downtown, oh. you know, and, and I we can't we can't talk about who it is quite yet, but talking about building relationships. Kelly, I just he introduced you to somebody, I think, just last week. And we're meeting this week. week, right? And thank you. That's exactly that's the, that's the, type the way it works. Of project that we want to get involved in mixed use, right? Housing, right? Um, and it's really going to activate. Again, I can't say too much about it, but you know, if you want to find out later on, keep watching the podcast. <laughs> but we're talking about a really exciting, you know, part of town, part mm-hmm. of the city that we're looking to develop, and we're working with a couple developers, and hopefully we can, you know, work together on that project because it would be wonderful. That's exactly, and we so appreciate being being connected Absolutely. and I hope we can add value to them. Yeah. And the fact that it's a priority for the city, huge. That takes it to the top of the list mm, for us yeah. because that's what we're trying to do more of. Right. We we're actually we have a new CEO, mm-hmm. um, Dan Rivera, former mayor of Lawrence. Great guy. And he has made it crystal clear in all of our minds that if there's a major project happening in a city and town in Massachusetts, he wants to be involved. He wants to be at the table. That's awesome. And so we need to find ways to make sure we're at the table. And so we're exploring ways to do more than we do already or differently Mm -hmm. and and just expand our reach to cover uh, all kinds of things, more folks, more companies. So, um, you know, we want to talk to everyone. It may not be (laughs) us. It may not be something we can do. But if it's not, we're going to make sure that we leave them with a referral of someone else. To someone else. So I'm excited to meet with that. Me too. Unnamed developer (laughs) in an area of town that's very Very exciting. exciting. (laughs) So, All right. I think you're giving me another high sign. I am. I am. So Spencer said, yes, you answered the question. (laughs) Great. Also, he loved the movie reference. What did I reference? If you build it, they will come. Oh. That's from a movie. I don't even know what movie it's from. (laughs) With Kevin, what's his name? Never mind. I totally meant to do that. (laughs) Oh, super cool. So What's the movie? <laughs> Field of Dreams. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It. Ew. <laughs> you gotta we love it, Spencer. You gotta love live stream. Spencer, I got you. Right. I almost said something like, <laughs> if you build it. Man. I say that all the time. Do had no idea where I got it from. Field yeah, of Dreams. That's great. You know? Awesome. Okay. Question. Okay. All right. So <laughs> Spencer said, what? that's what i'm saying man hey all right all right okay michael austin also said field of dreams Dreams, thanks (laughs) he doesn't miss a beat president austin does not miss a beat. he does not all right so sammy has a question here are there specific requirements a project in marlboro needs to meet in order to qualify for mass development programs that's a good question. What a I great question. I don't think there's any specific requirements, but different programs for different types of projects, right? Yeah, we have so many different programs. Mm. I mean, there are different requirements for, for Each specific one. programs. Right. Yeah. But in general, if you're a manufacturer, if you're a nonprofit, if you're a housing developer of rental housing, we don't do for sale housing, um, market rate or affordable. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. If you're adding jobs. If we want to talk to you. And you're coming to Marlboro, we're expanding, yeah. in Mar- we're fixed asset lenders. So I should say we're not really in the working capital business. But if Wait, you're building a building. Wait, fixed asset lenders. Tell me. Tell fixed me. asset lenders. Think Break building yeah. equipment. Anything yeah. that it, that you can hold on to. Okay. So not things that are in your monthly cash flow, working capital. Payroll. So and, payroll, yeah. things okay. like that. But right. if it's in a building, a renovation, an expansion, purchase of capital equipment. If it goes mm-hmm. on your capital equipment budget, yeah. you can consider that a fixed asset. Okay. Yeah. Thank That's you. exciting. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I learn new things every day right? here at MDC. <laughs> Were there more questions? Because I have, I wanted to talk, jump You want to go down and rant? No, did I you, just wanted to go down another rabbit <laughs> hole. Did you want me to bring up more comments about Field of Dreams? No, I do not want you to do no. that. <laughs> we, you want to move on? I want to move on. You don't want to stay there? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> it's, too much, it's too much fun to tease sometimes. Oh, well, you know. All right. <laughs> go, go ahead, Meredith. So, all right. I'm going completely changing, like, changing our, our track here. One thing that you guys did at Mass Development a couple years ago that we were kind of doing at the same time that I think would be really fun to talk about is kind of the the brew like the whole brewery craze. Do you remember a couple years ago? Absolutely. And you guys were all over that, and we were trying to kind of jump into it at the same time. And through the, during the 2014 downtown rezoning, that was like the number one thing when we asked people, "What do you want to see in your downtown?" And it was everybody wanted to see brew pubs. You know, they wanted to have breweries. So we kind of do you remember we put out this ad? calling for breweries and we we did it in like a national publication it was brilliant thank you it was brilliant i think you're the only community that i've ever heard of that did that yeah 
I thought it was just such a great idea. It was a great, and it was, nobody else was doing, and literally, I remember sitting around the executive committee table and we're saying, how, you know, we've put it out, you know, how do we really put it out there? And so somebody, I forget who it was, we'll have to go back and check the minutes, but somebody said, why don't we just put it out there? You know, literally put an ad out that says, we're looking for you, come mm. talk to us, we have incentives available, we want you in our downtown. And it ended up that we we put out a national call, but we ended up with a couple of brewers from, one was from Worcester, and then a couple of folks from Marlboro, which have stayed, but Flying Dreams was a referral from you, Kelly. Well, it was kind of an odd referral, I, but <laughs> a fun referral. What were we having, dinner one night? It was after one of the shows in New York, and I think I, I had just gotten into the beer scene because I was out. This was terrible. I really hated it, but I had to test a lot of beer because we were <laughs> looking part of the, the job. Jazz. It was terrible, but you know, we really had to try out a lot of different breweries to see who we wanted to bring to Marlboro. And I, I think we were having a beer after one of the shows in New York City, and you like mentioned this kind of randomly about Dave. Well, it was very weird because I had just met with Dave, yeah. like maybe the week before, yeah. and he had expressed that they needed more space. They right. were going to stay in Worcester, but they needed to expand somewhere. And I, and then when you were talking, I'm like, hang on, you're like, Wait let me minute. text him right now <laughs> to let him know that you had a brewery yes. that had kind of a, a false they, start that correct. didn't finish. Correct. And I was able to say to him, here's a brewery that's half fit out. Right. Here's a community that wants you. Right. And will welcome you and will help you get there. Right. And of course, you took that ball and ran with it. <laughs> and I sure think you did. guys met the next week. I think we did. And you let me know, well, they're coming. They're coming. So those are the kind of Huge. unexpected, random Exciting. You know, back of a napkin, right, that right? Turn into something real, and right. I love that story. And we are still very active with breweries. Yes. Um, in fact, we're really trying to expand our reach to breweries mm. to more diverse breweries. Yeah. Because there are really not a lot of diverse breweries mm. in the Commonwealth. Yeah. And we've gotten pretty good at it. That's awesome. Um, There's so, so we're many. we're meeting with 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 a group next week. I think it's called Hop Forward. Cool. Which is a, huh. a spinoff of of another group but um so yeah we we love to fund breweries we've we love we've it done them from breweries. Small, <laughs> from small to to large and if any of your breweries need anything we're still in that business That's awesome we're not going away from it i'd say for a maybe a year or so we were yeah. a little saturated we were getting mm, too many right. and we thought uh-oh is this going to be putting all of our apples in one basket well, back to but that whole conversation. as we found breweries are recession proof they're even mm. pandemic. Everybody proof. needs beer. I mean, <laughs> beer did not go down during the pandemic, yeah, and some of our not. breweries that we were a little worried about, they're thriving. They're doing yeah, so. Right. We're not going anywhere on breweries. Right. right. And um, well, I, I will say that every town again has kind of followed your lead. I am not exaggerating when I say I get a call a month, yeah. at least, huh. from a community that says. We are anxious. We're dying for a brewery. Yeah. If you hear of any, can you please send them to our town mm. and we will roll out the red carpet for them. And I've had a couple do a really good job of that That's that have awesome. gotten breweries. Yeah. When you, and I think at the beginning, in that time when breweries were kind of, they were popping up all over the place. And I think you could, weren't you guys involved with like worm like a couple of tree them. Treehouse. Treehouse. That's right. Yes. One of my favorites. Yeah. If we could get a tree. Oh. Anyways, I go down a different <laughs> they, they keep expanding. Marble they do keep next. expanding. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> right that time. <laughs> That's a follow-up trip. Right, a follow-up trip. Field but, trip. Field trip. <laughs> Can we, That's our closest. Is that where we're going after this? Trip? <laughs> no, but I, I think people were worried that there was too many breweries, right? Mm. And, and I think what has been really exciting is that they actually thrive being near each other, you know, because mm. people, you become a destination, right? And you're talking about visit visit Marlboro, shameless plug, visit Marlboro, uh, visit dash Marlboro.com. But if you come into the community, a lot of people, they'll stay the day, right? And yeah. so they'll pop from one brewery to the next they'll be getting takeout from wellies downtown bringing it over to lost shoes yes. and they love doing that and brew tourism is it's a huge. real thing right and i just saw i can't even remember where i saw it now but there's a map of all the breweries yes. in massachusetts yeah. and you know how far apart they are and right. you want a bunch of them in a small distance with a hotel very close by <laughs> so that when you end your Good fun-filled pub day. Crawl. <laughs> yeah, it's the new pub it's crawl. A, it's a, and they're family-friendly in a lot of cases. Well, that's the yeah. thing. I yeah. love that. And dog-friendly, a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. whole family goes out. The kids have some cotton candy, a slice of pizza. Mom awesome. and dad have a beer. Right. Everybody goes home Everybody's and takes a happy. nap and it's done. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. No, and I think, you know, from a tourism perspective, too, as we kind of crawl out of the pandemic, I think people are excited to get back out there yeah. and people are excited to be doing doing those types of things and so hopefully folks will get back out and, and you know visit some of our local spots and I think the stuff. last week or so has been e any indication, indication. <laughs> I know 
people are, are ready. dying yeah. and ready yeah. to get out. That's awesome. Wow. For sure. So one more question for you before we let you go. Sure. So you've talked a little bit about Marlboro and the things you think that we're doing great. Is there anything, Kelly, that you've seen in your, you know, your years in economic development that we're not doing? Or are there any suggestions you have for us mm. or for Marlboro or even just more accolades? We love to take accolades. I mean, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, the accolades are many because I, I think the world of what Marlboro does. I, I really can't think of things you're not doing because if mm. there's something new to be done, we're ready. We're willing to You're do it. You're always ready to do it. Yeah. Um, we talked a little bit about the um, the loan pool. Yeah. Did that yeah. ever get any traction well, with so the I banks? Think it's a great. I'm really excited that you brought that up. So we loan ta- pool. Yeah. So our revolving loan fund okay. program. Yeah. Um, shout out to Linda Martins. If anybody yeah, needs a loan, please go <laughs> go to our website. <laughs> Linda at <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but we've been talking about that for a couple for years, right? And, yes. and I know Roy's been involved in the conversation. Yep. And so we have the revolving loan fund program, which is um, we have four of our local banks plus the city have put money into this fund. Okay. We've been able to get loans out um, into some of our local business. Big Apple Deli is one. Justin mm. Sheridan with Mass Signal. Um, so we've got a couple kitty time daycare. We've had a couple loans go out. They've paid them back. We're really excited that nobody was able to, um, nobody fell through during the pandemic. They've all been able to actually pay their loans off. Which that was really going to be my next question. Which is great. Yeah. But we would love to take it to the next level. Mm. We would love to take that loan program to the next level and get mass development involved or, or kind of something like that. So maybe that's something we can follow up with. It is something. Yeah. And I will tell you that I, I don't have any answers today. Yeah. But I just know that the thinking at mass development is we have to find a way to be more creative Mm -hmm. to reach more businesses that we're not currently Currently able to service Mm -hmm. so the small business community they've been hit hard by the pandemic right and and it's not been typically an area that we've done a lot in sure and we think that now might be the time to try to figure out how we can play a bigger role so yes so you have it for you (laughs) we did not pre-rehearse this and that could not be a better takeaway we've got to continue that conversation and find out how we could collaborate work together and enhance it right and even if we can be a funding source yeah. that allows more businesses to come and if we could partner on getting the word out be awesome. to Marlboro businesses. And right. there's a lot of them. Right. And smaller amounts. Right. You know? Right. It doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be 500000 nope. or a million. But no. Nope. The 50000 the 25000 well, the 100000 But even, mm-hmm. Kelly, our first loan that we did through the program was $2,000. I mean, it, it wasn't a big amount. It was our first one. We were kind of dipping our toes in the water. and But it was such a great story. It was a Marlboro resident, guy who wanted to start his own elect, um, electrician. He was an electrician. Wanted really? to start his own business. And he needed to buy the bucket truck. I wish we had queued up some of the pictures because it's <laughs> such a cool story. But he want, he needed to buy the bucket truck, and he only had 80% percent of the the loan that he needed to to buy the truck and Mm -hmm. we were able to help him purchase the truck and he's still in business he's doing great that's awesome so just for the benefit of anyone who might be listening yes you did it you took the gamble you worked hard on figuring it out right Mm -hmm. has it proven to be a major task or is it manageable oh it's totally manageable and i linda i'm speaking for you so i know (laughs) (laughs) how's that linda (laughs) but no it it really from an administrative standpoint it's it's not it's not that much of an overhaul, right? I mean, mm-hmm. so we do have to manage the fund, make sure that people are paying on time and that they're, you know, we're communicating with folks. I think the the heavy lift for it, honestly, is more the marketing. Mm-hmm. It's to try to make sure that people know that it's available and, and, and that it's not, there's no catch, right? Because I think sometimes people are a little, okay, what's the catch? And you know, no, there really isn't one. You know, this is a pool of funds that's available to you. And as you pay it and your interest, it goes back into the pool to go back out into the community, which is kind of cool. And what is the max right now that a company can apply for? So we, we don't have a cap on it. We try to target between 35,000 uh, to maybe 100,000. We, oh, gave, we did an 80,000 loan a couple of years ago. Yeah, just depends on the situation. You know, and, and if we have the funds available, we, I'm, we'd be happy to, to wow. loan money out. Wow, okay, that's yeah. great to know. I love that. Yeah, and we, I think we need to do another round with the banks too. So thank you, Kelly, for yeah. this. We will absolutely be kind of putting that on our yeah. to-do list. Absolutely, right? and and I want to stay involved in that conversation because Good. I think we can do more, and I feel like the, the atmosphere at Mass Development is ready for it. Ready to do more. That's huh. awesome. And be more creative. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Perfect. President think, Austin oh. said, not only manageable, but a great asset for our local businesses. Yeah, and agreed. Linda, thank you. On Facebook, Linda dropped the link um, for how they can That's awesome. get more information. And we did create a video we did. earlier yeah. this year, so maybe we can reshare that online this Absolutely. week. Absolutely. Yeah. 
I gotta say, I'm just like I'm 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 kind of in the middle here. Like physically, I'm in the middle here. <laughs> but I'm just listening to you both talk. I mean, it's it's really it's inspiring. I mean, the the topic of today's uh, podcast was what building building relationships. relationships. Yeah. And the fact that you guys have a genuine relationship where you are not afraid to ask each other questions. Not at all. You rely on each Probably other. Probably too comfortable, right? It's, oh, <laughs> it's I wonderful. I could love it more. Right. It's, no, this is, it's, this is it's what refreshing. makes working fun right. yeah. when you have relationships like this that yeah, you know right. you can be honest with. and Right. Um, you know. That's yeah. we, and, and we work hard, play hard too, right? We, we really get a lot do. done. Wait, we I think really I have a, a picture of you guys playing hard. <laughs> Hey, Kelly can't see the picture, but it's really fun. It's really fun. <laughs> I can imagine. There's Very plenty fun. of them. That's right. no, and, but I think um, the relationship that we've built, and I said at the beginning, when I first came into MEDC, you were hu- hugely instrumental in helping me kind of break into the economic development oh, so world glad. within the state. And we've just continued to build on the relationship. And I so look forward to getting back out there with oh, you and meeting on the road. and talking to people. <laughs> me too. Right. Me no, too. I, I couldn't agree more. You've been just such a pleasure to work with. Thank and you. Um, I always know that when we get together, something good is going to come of well, it. That, yeah. You know, and that's yeah. great. It's never just wasted time. Right. We, we both act on what we say we're going to do and things happen. Things so. happen. I love Marlboro. So thank you. Guys. We love this Kelly, our and mass development. <laughs> so. So I think with that, we're out of time. Kelly, yeah. thank you so much thank for joining you. us today. Oh my gosh, this, this has was been fun. such a pleasure. And <laughs> this was great. You're welcome back anytime on our podcast. <laughs> yes. We love to have you. So thank you to everybody for tuning in today. We look forward to talking to you, uh, not next, not next week, but the week after. Yep. And that'll be episode ten. So yeah. we're really looking forward to that. And we'll see you soon. Bye everyone. Bye. Thank-